Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Herd Fit Podcast with Dr. Sam Marie and myself, Coach David Syverson. This podcast is aimed at helping anyone and everyone looking to enhance their healthy lifestyle through fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, mindset. All right. So this is going to be the final episode of the Christ CrossFit Bison history slash, you know, how to grow a gym, how to improve a gym. And I think one of the, the biggest move that we ever made, other than deciding to actually open up the gym, was to move it. There's like a certain emotional attachment to 59 Greenwood, Unit 6. That's where we were for five years. About a year before the lease was up, someone approached us that owned the building where we are currently right now and said, like, hey, if you guys are ever looking for another space, I think I might have something for you. We drove down there. I saw it. It was did not look anything like it did right now. But I did see... Once you have been in enough CrossFits, a general layout well enough to be like, this will work. And some of it's ceiling height, some of it's width, length, doors, bathrooms. Like there's a lot of things that you have to look into, but we knew it was going to work as long as we can go through that, you know, zoning process smoothly. So prior to, man, I don't want to get my dates wrong here, but I'm pretty sure we agreed to come over here at some point fall of 2018, that's when we were like, I actually remember I was in, I was in New Hampshire. It was summer of 2018, August. I remember texting Caleb in the woods of New Hampshire and I kept on losing service about like, Hey, will we agree to this or not? And so we basically had a solid six, seven, eight months to do it. And we knew that the process would be a little smoother with zoning because we had been through it. Yep. We had eight months, we were operating our gym, so we weren't desperate. And so we started moving forward with it. Chris, what were your thoughts when we first started to talk about it? Well, we came over, we saw what it was. It was a mess in there. It was yeah, a truck so much it stuff. Was a, yeah. It was a furniture cat, like store. They're yeah. building furniture. And we knew it would be a huge project. It was going to be a, a huge project, but, and we were comfortable where we were. Yes. And it was like, we could just take the easy road and stick around, yep. renew the lease for another five years. Or if we really are, you know, going to run this, like, for the long haul, yep. like we're in this, yep. then we need a bigger space. Yep. And because it was crowded, it, yeah, the, the it was reason, getting crowded. And the reason we needed a bigger space for basically the morning classes were getting 25 people per. Yep. And I, to this day, don't know how we did that. I mean, we're very spoiled here. So I think we kind of lose track, but you literally had probably a six by six foot square to work out in. And you would, you could be 60 feet away from your pull up bar. Yep. On any given day. You were dropping barbells right next to people yep. like doing burpees. Inch, inches yeah. away. <laughs> inches. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we right. just knew, like, all right, we're either capped out here, and this is how much money we're going to make. And honestly, we were – that was when we started to be comfortable with how much money we were making. Not not enough. That was our best year. At, yeah. Like, at, at that time, that was a really good year for us. Because our rent was a lot lower there than it yeah. is here, obviously. More space. But – I remember thinking like, all right, we finally make it. But now we're at this decision point where we're about to jack the the expenses up by over a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And then we, right as soon as we finally got to a point where we were both with good with the money and members, we took on a new project. Right? Yeah, yeah. It takes it takes a very long time to to build businesses like this. So we took on the project of doing it, and it was not it it, it was still painful. Yeah. Like it, we still had to come up with the the drawings, the architect drawings, the city plan, all the inspections, the fire, it's like the zoning. It's like PTSD uh, all over again. It was we did, it was all over again. I mean, Same yeah, lawyer. a little less stressful a little bit because we were already in business making money, but our 5-year lease was up. Yeah. So we had a, a another small window when they could get this tenant out and we could move in and then would our would our guy let us go, our landlord at the time? Could we go month to month? Yeah. Or do we have to sign a year or whatever? And like, he was always very fair to us, but he was not a person out. Like, you couldn't talk to him. He was by the book. Yeah. So he would have been like, sorry, we can't go month to month. It's one year leases only. Or whatever it was in his, whatever, whatever they ran their, their rules by, like, he would have, he would have, he did let us go month to month. To month and yep. we did run over. Yeah. We went, we, it was always, we opened a couple months after we thought. We opened in finally April. Yeah, it was after the open. We yeah. were looking at a February. Yeah, I, kept, I remember saying, "Let's let's let let's not shoot for that. Yeah, let's push back another month. This, this is where is going to happen. This is where our personalities are are yeah. good for each other. In that, I'm like aggressive, unrealistically sometimes with a, with a lot of things. With my own personal goals, like I still think I'm going to make the game something. Well, when you coach, go unbroken on everything. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> but the, the the I am unrealistic. You can say like I'm too much of a dreamer or something like that. Whatever. But 
Chris is more like this. This might not what happened. There's a lot I, of moving parts. Is right. What I was thinking like let's not right. like th- it, it could very easily be another month or two or three. I remember, and that's okay. And th- so we knew in the fall that we were doing this, but we weren't telling anyone. Mm. And yeah, yeah. I and we were both like, right, yeah, let's just not tell any of the members. And I got drunk at the holiday party. And as I'm saying thank you to the members, oh, the right. I go, so by the way, we're <laughs> oh, moving gyms, and like Chris and Dallas are just. Oh man, <laughs> I, I, I forgot about that. <laughs> and uh, that might have been the most intoxicated I think I've seen you in a long time. So I had a discussion with Ashley the other day. I haven't been that. I haven't been. I don't think I've actually been drunk, drunk in in probably since that time. The fall of 2018. Yeah. The fall? Okay. That was, yeah. That's that, what it, the Carlo left earlier that night? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that we, got out of hand. Maybe we'll have a podcast episode on some holiday parties, <laughs> funny stories. Just that, could, that could take an hour. So so that, that's where like I kind of lose control a little bit is uh, not alcohol, but just I, I'm a dreamer. I like to be optimistic and, and, and always be glass half full. Sometimes it helps me. Sometimes it doesn't. But I remember telling people that we were doing this before we really knew if this was going to work, if you know, we had to go through all this town stuff. And we would look like idiots if this didn't work out because of a town thing. Yeah. And I told the world, right? So I, And we had so much stuff that had to be done. Chris, Chris is saying all the zoning, but we had to build bathrooms. We oh, put right. that floor down, the floor and everything. Was yeah. Like, it was... The we, walls were knocked down. Right. Yeah. Like, like we, we knew we could handle the stuff of putting the gym together, but we did have to do... A, Bob. Um, Bob's like was a godsend for yeah. us like, this would not have happened without bob and bob we built all the walls in bison for like the wall balls that like those those walls only went halfway at the they gym. were soft white like the canvas thing oh yeah, yeah for the top hat so the I entire mean. gym did not have walls basically mm. for wall balls and handstand push-ups so we had to build all those and then paint them and so we had to do all this while we were running old bison during the CrossFit Open, are this yeah. like these three, four weeks coming up are the busiest weeks of our year w- w- in relation to to Bison, and w- this is what we Chris has mentioned this before. Like we had to make the decision at some point we could stay the same, sign another five release at the old space, stay comfortable, and maybe the quality of the product wouldn't be that high, but we'd be making decent money, and we'd be happy there. We'd be comfortable. But we tell people all the time here, like if you're chasing after comfort, you're losing. And there's a line that you don't want to go over, yes, but we felt that this was a move that this would make us very uncomfortable, both short term, building the space out, but also a long term with the financials. Like we literally I think the the expenses increased by over hundred percent across the board. Yeah. And and but so you only make a move there if you feel like you're going to perform like you know grow. Grow. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. so Chris, keep going. Yeah, I mean like finance we, we we took that we took a, we opened up a credit line and everything for that because I mean I like I didn't want to get like the, the floor alone. We wanted to have a, a real nice looking gym. If we we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it right. Like that floor, the seamless floor, that that floor alone cost thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. I love yeah. it because how many gaps would form at the old gym? Like yeah. things you don't even realize. Yeah. All we the time. laid that old floor out. We I mean we're like, we are not doing that again. Yeah. Like every one of those pallets was 105 pounds. <laughs> our thumbs, like our grip. Yeah. We were dead. And it would just be too much. And we you want it to look good. Like yeah. And, and so, I mean, and even it wouldn't have been that much cheaper, probably. Right. But, you know, you but, could trust the, uh, and I mean, the good thing is, is the Zudamas are the ones who uh, own this place. And they were yeah. very solid people to trust in terms of yeah. working with them. On That's it. one advantage yes. of like being from this town. Like, I graduated with one of the Zudamas. Mm-hmm. Like, my brother was a year above. Like, we knew the family forever. Yeah. And you, that's where being from this area and opening up business in this area. It's helped us, both of us, in a lot of different ways. Yeah, yeah. Caleb we and Seth to, are also to great. Trust the landlord too, and we trust them that they know what we're, they know our product. All the boys worked out there, and they knew what we were looking for. Like, there's not going to be any loopholes in the in the contract that are, they're gonna, not going to kick us out. Chris doesn't need to show up to a, a meeting with the landlord with a phone recording in his pocket. I mean, <laughs> we didn't trust the old guy so badly. <laughs> That one time I went to go talk to him, and I forget what the actual, what what it was about, but I put on the audio recording, and I had my phone. Like a wire. A wi- I was wired. It was and breast in my pocket. breast pocket, and like, a, and like a button down, and I went in there, just in case I had to hold him to something. If we were on, you know, the Supreme Court one day, or, you know, a very important matter, a warehouse issue. And also... <laughs> No, the architect, we had the first one. Luckily, we, we met, you know, the pages throughout yes. this, and Brittany Page did the, the work for for this building. Yeah. But the first guy, I wrote the, if it, I would not, 
I would fully expect this guy, if he saw me and Dave, to run away and hop over a fence. Okay, if he we saw were, us, we were so angry we, with him. We we would have we we showed up at his office like he was nervous yeah. about at a certain point. Yeah, that, I mean, back in those early so, days when we were being tossed around yeah. by, by every moving piece possible that was preventing it from opening. This is where I understand when you get desperate, you start doing some weird things. And like <laughs> the draw, like we finally like, where are the drawings? They should be ready. Dave, you drove to Trenton, yeah. in a snowstorm, yep. because we were waiting for them to FedEx some drawings. Well, we could save a day or whatever if we went. He went to Trenton to pick them up just so we could get them like w one day earlier. And I went in that office. Nobody goes in there. You know, like you ever send things to government and it takes forever? Yeah. I can see why now because I literally walked into, I don't even know why they let me in, but I had to show all this ID. I had to write these forms and I walk into the office and it, it was definitely the kind of office that nobody goes in. There were stacks and stacks of paper and boxes and these little cubicles with people not working and they're just, they're like, when I said, I'm here for the plans for this building in this town, you guys are sending them tomorrow. They're like, what are you doing here? I don't think anyone's ever done that. They're like, okay, I, I guess we can go get them out of the mail room. And we brought them up a day earlier. Yeah. Like, wow. well, I'm like, well, how can we get, how can we get these drawings quicker? We could go to Trenton and pick them up. What's the address? <laughs> you know, like we're, that fine. We will. I, I had conversations when I was still, we were still working at the trading floor that were with the, with the architect that I called when we opened, I called the back office guys, the tech guys, I still like knew them. They pulled some tapes for me and mailed me a, a memory stick with recorded phone conversations with the, <laughs> in case again, that we had to go to the Supreme Court or whatever. But they mailed it to me. Like those guys actually like pulled the tapes for me and mailed them, FedEx them to me in, on a memory stick. But yeah, we were so like cover our, we, we we really were just like paranoid with all that stuff, yeah. you know? So yeah, here's another anyway. thing, paranoia. Like I would say probably the biggest fight Chris and I ever got in was paranoia. So basically just imagine like how busy we are doing the open, also building a new gym. So, and whenever you're not working, you're over here building up the new gym. And we, um, the, what was this? It was in April. Oh uh, no, sorry. It was in March. So it was like at the tail end of the open, always an emotional time for everybody. We we are days away from opening up the gym and we ran into a lot of roadblocks in the last month because we we didn't do things the right way in terms of building the bathroom. It was my fault, I screwed something up, bad communication. And we almost got the roadblock of you can't open until this gets inspected and it won't get inspected for a couple more weeks. And it ended up working out, but we had other th fire things to jump through, but we had one more like final big work weekend to do. And we're like, hey, everyone, clear your schedules Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like, we got it. We're opening this thing next week. And we found out just, I think, the day or two before that, that we we had to be out of the old bison. Like, literally everything had to be out. Walls had to be painted white in, like, in two days. In two, two days, I think. Yeah, we had two days to do it. And, again, it was probably poor communication on our part and, like, how we were going to go about this. And the other option was to pay for another month of rent, I think. It was like a half month. He was going to give us a half month. To so, yeah, we'd have to be paying like, like $2,000. Yeah, 2000 bucks. right? We didn't want to. And so we, we <laughs> I remember walking in the gym, talking to Chris, and Chris is like, no, no, we have to get it out. I'm like, how are we going to do that this weekend and build out the news? Like, Maybe we'll just ask for help. I'm like, who? I'm like, who are the amps is going to help us out? He goes, I'll take care of it. Like, sure. we're yelling, we're yelling at each other on the phone. I'm walking yeah. down the old running path at, at Bison screaming into the phone. Like I've never done, I don't think I've ever done that twice. <laughs> but I was just so frustrated with, at the, the past few months yep. and the bathroom talk and like the town telling me I did something wrong. Sokol yelling at me for something, right? Like fucking painting it. We would come over here and fucking paint. Yeah. And so this is where the bison community really, I think this is probably the, the most humbling thing that's ever been done for us. In a matter of two days, Chris has a couple I'm shots. Like, I'll take this project. Yeah, like, yeah, you take this. Stop over. yelling at me. I put on Beast of Bison on the Facebook group, and um, like Deb T, first one. I'm in. I'll help you. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we we got every single floor mat back out of that place. The rig, Ashley's Ashley's dad came down, and he was he was helping us get the uh, bolts out of the ground and everything. We got. Every floor mat out of the place and out the back door. Again, my thumbs were were dying. 
painted uh, set killed me to paint over the mural. Yeah. Painted over the mural, the painted entire every wall. White. We had the scaffolding. I had Deb T and everyone else that helped. Uh, we have video of a painting, painting the over the the signatures, the names in the room, like Elena's on Kayla G's shoulders <laughs> with a roller. Bodie or Savannah was rolling out, like uh, yeah, the like, little so, kids, like the little kids yeah. were rolling. Yeah, we had, everyone had paper. I went, I bought like a million rollers and paintbrushes, and people were fixing holes in the wall. Everybody chipped in, it, like everybody chipped in, and the place on Monday morning, I went over there with the landlord. Well, I also said, I'm like, I confirmed with him. I said, if we're out by Monday, we don't have to pay the two weeks. Or the, the, and he's, yeah, yeah, but I was in there the other day. Like, You're screwed. Yeah, you, 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 okay, whatever. Monday morning, he walks in, and the guy, he actually, <laughs> he, he kind of laughed. He had a smile on his face, and he goes, CrossFit, this is what you guys do. Huh? And I'm like, yep. I'm like, we got it done. I told you. He's like, amazing. Yeah. I'm amazed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm amazed. Good job. <laughs> and that was it. And he didn't, we didn't have to pay. Never heard from him again. Never heard from him again. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. It was, there wasn't one thing in there. It looked better than when we moved. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was amazing what the, the people did for us because we wouldn't, it wouldn't have been possible to do that even probably in a whole week with, with, if it was just us. Yeah. And it, it's, it's cool even to Ashley's and, and, and mother and the, uh, and stepmom, they helped build out this new space too. And yeah. it goes to show like how much, this is why I don't like it when people will shout out to us like, oh, you guys have built this. You guys have done it from the scar. We have gotten so much help from so many people and I never want that to get neglected. Like I'd rather never anyone ever say that again and just say, wow, like this group of people has done so much for you guys. You try to give back as much you can. But I remember even just like dating back to Ashley's early days of, of she, she coached here for months without ever being paid in addition to her full-time job like i even to this day i see some of these guys that come in and coach at night after being at work for eight nine ten hours it's a huge thing but i remember ash was just like such a big part of the gym early on because she was the the girl the only the first girl to be here and then to see her father helping us out build the there was these things we couldn't get out of the ground it was the we we bolt the rig into the ground right yeah. And it sticks up like six inches and you can't, they're too strong to cut out. Like with the stuff we have, like we're sitting here trying to tear it out yeah, yeah, yeah. and they don't budge. And he comes out with this saw out of nowhere. And it's just like th those, I remember those moments just watching him. It wasn't even a thought for him. He just drove up here for 45 minutes, had yeah. this saw that I'm probably not even allowed to touch. Yeah. And the thing's gone like that. And he does it with every single bolt that was still in the ground. And I remember thinking like that, it brought me back to those early days of 2014. Remember our parents came yeah. and helped set up the gym and clean clean the gym that one time. My yeah. dad's done a lot of painting at this gym, at the old gym. It's it's so awesome to see family, but also the, the Bison family do that for you because you never, this this place does not exist with that kind of help. It just doesn't. It's, not, it's just too much work for two, three people, you know? Oh, yeah, that weekend was so crazy. I actually have video too of the girls were taking some of the mats out. They were putting them into cars because people took some of the floor mats. And like Liz is Liz was coaching like the the last class that night. There was only like two people in it, but the gym was half. There's only a few rubber pallets left on the floor, and everyone else was moving stuff out. I also remember on that Sunday, I was I was pit. We had to finish up over there, but that was the opening day of here. And people were doing open gym. I think it was the first time we had people in here. Yeah, open gym slash come see it. Yeah. And I had I was driving Dallas's truck around with shit in the back, like yeah. trying to do it. And I'm like, I wanted to be at the fucking the, the yeah. new gym, like yeah. the open. But that was just a very man. That was a really stressful time. Yeah. A lot of it, it was not a smooth transition. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it worked. I, I think the one thing you have to be if you're ever going to be a business owner or try to take on something like this, you have to be good at solving problems. Yeah. Like you just have to know that like we're like we already know there's going to be more problems that come up in the next like maybe this week with the open, next week with the open or big picture stuff. And then that actually, I actually think all these things that we went through helps us through the pandemic. I was about to say, so you move, you yep. double your expenses. Yep. And at a full-time coach. At a full-time coach. And right after that, <laughs> COVID hits yeah. and you're like, wonderful. Yeah. How did that go? Yeah. I mean, that, that could be a whole nother episode, but we, I mean, COVID, I remember shutting the door to the gym and I think I made a corny Instagram post about it, but like I was shutting the door and I said, we'll be back stronger than ever. And I I honestly believed it. 
I really did. Now, I also thought the pandemic would last two weeks. Exactly. <laughs> that was a huge help. Yeah. Like, how, long we, guys o- how long were you guys open before you had to close? In the new space? Yeah. It was 13 months. No, less than 12 months. It was 11 months. Wow. Yeah. We started in April and we got closed in March. So th- that that time period, was, it just tested us in different ways. But again, we had so much support. Like I got so many messages when we got shut down. So, hey, like I'm never canceling my membership no matter what. Were you guys ever yeah. scared this wasn't going to happen or something bad was going to happen in terms of the actual gym existing? I, I mean, I don't know. I was never like ready to wrap it up or throw. Part of the part of a helpful thing was not knowing it was going to be so long. Like I right. did think like every... Next month, we should be open. This part is new. Brought us back to 2014. It's I mean, like, right? Next yeah, month, it's going to be month. open. It's going to be, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, like, there's, it's, it's very, it's, it's a stressful thing. Yeah. Like, a lot of, a lot of like moving parts involved. Like, yeah. Mike's job, like your, your whole family. It, it, it was, it, it, it could have been a lot worse though. I mean, I don't think we ever, we definitely had arguments and things like that, but we never were like, Shut we're it fucked. down. We're yeah. not. We're not. We're, we're not. We're not. We're fucked. You know? No, and we never did. Luckily, we had so many people keep their memberships going. There's yep. a lot of people who didn't too, but like, and I, I totally understandable. Yeah, right? I mean, it's oh, yeah. a lot of money. But... Yeah, you never looked at anything in the pandemic as personal, unless yeah. someone else made it personal. It was always like, if you got to cancel, like, dude, I get it. You know, trust me, I get it. We're, and one thing we never had to do was turn off any payments, to any coaches, even the part timers. Like, it yep. was just we kept it going, and but there was opportunities to raise money for the gym. And we decided to give it to somebody else down in Tennessee that we didn't even know that they had their right. gym ravaged by a tornado. And I think that's like the whole pay it forward idea is like when you really feel like you need help, I think you should go try to help other people. And then I think what you need eventually comes your way. Like I, I live like by that, by that all the time. And I, yeah. I think that's what Bison did for us is they, they showed us a lot of support. We did everything we could with Zoom. We did everything we could with the outdoor parking lots. We worked out in mass for nine months. And at home workouts, yeah. the program for, for everyone. And and yeah, exactly. The at home all the at home stuff and you creating that leaderboard at night. You're probably like, Oh, I'll do this for a couple of weeks. <laughs> eight weeks later, you know, <laughs> still doing it. But that was that was when I feel like we went from all right, we're a really good gym to a great gym. I really think it was during the yeah. pandemic. And how people how we handled the mass situation, the political divide that's in our country, but also even in some cases in our gym, all this stuff. I think the biggest thing that we do is Chris and I never really take a side on, on that kind of stuff. Right. Is we just, we, we talk to each other about it all the time. Like we would never put out what our conversations are between ourselves on that stuff. But it's important that we, that we don't take sides. And I think it, that can rub some people the wrong way, but we do that on purpose because you're here for everybody. I'm not here for two people. I'm not here for 10. I'm here for the whole, whole gym. Yeah. I have to say as owners, you... I don't think there could be much else that you guys would encounter that that experience hasn't given you every possible tool, challenge, challenge. like you guys are probably, I I think most CrossFit owners who had to deal with it are some of the most experienced, resilient business owners out there because if you were a gym owner during that time and you survived and you got through it and you got, you got, you were, you stayed successful. Yeah. I mean, you could, om- you could do anything probably. Yeah. yeah there's not going to be a lot. Hopefully nothing ever like that happens again. I mean, I, I stayed busy with uh, like the PPP loans and all that stuff, like all that paperwork, like it gave me something to do. Yeah. I mean, and, and that helped all well, that stuff helped for sure. Yeah. No, that's a huge reason why we're, we're in a decent spot right now is going through all like the PPP stuff and like, without that, I mean, that's, yeah, we're, that, we're that's not, huge. we're not a million dollar business. You know, we, we actually got value this past summer and it was less than we thought we were just for the simple reason of this business style where it's prescription based, a membership base where people could drop tomorrow and all of a sudden you're nothing. Yeah. It's not a huge valuable big time business. Like we're not going to sell, sell it. it. Yeah, we're never gonna sell this business for ten mil. You know, like oh, like right off into the sunset. Never gonna happen. But the value is in the a lot is, is in the staff like, and the ownership like, and the ownership being involved. We got I've gotten asked by this from other gyms is how involved should the owners be? And I said you should be there all the time. And it, it that that's what makes the business valuable. That's where it makes sense. And I know gyms that have had owners in Florida that, that own a gym in New Jersey. It doesn't work out. Yeah, it, it just it just doesn't work out that way. So that can kind of like leeway like where we think Bison's headed for the future, where it's CrossFit headed for the future. And as confident as we may seem in the product, like it's still a, a day-to-day grind, week-to-week that 
you know, it does, it does cause some sleep loss. It causes stress because again, it's a membership, it's a business that could disappear for a lot of different reasons in, in a week or two. It's funny because the past couple months we've gotten through the whole variant situation yep. and things took a big dip and then they came back up again. Yep. And uh, there are still some changes that in terms of lanes and, and yeah. all sorts of things that are sort of a result of all that. But I have to say, when I look at, say this past week, for example, right. classes are bigger than they've ever been. More people are showing up at every probably time of the day than they ever have. Yep. There are more members that are joining than they ever have. And then also returning members coming back as right. well. More people sign up for the open than Right, ever. more, yeah, we have the yeah. most people ever sign up for the open right, at 219, Bison, yeah. Which is what? Fifth in the world, fourth yeah, in the world. Fourth yeah. in the world, like 40 more than we had last year. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, where, like, where do you think? Yeah, you're, where you're, do you go from here? I, I don't know, you're reaching capacity in the morning, I'll tell you that right now. What are you guys gonna do? <laughs> I know this, our lease is up in two years and we don't wanna leave here. We, we've said that to each other, we've said that to the landlords, but you also need to keep in mind that at some point we might need more space. Is there a cap? We've talked about this. Is there a cap to how many members you can have here? And then does that fulfill all of our financial needs, wants, desires, goals, all that? Yeah. Chris, what do you think? That's, I mean, that, that's, some, I mean, that, that type of, th what, what are our options? I think that we both have, I think that we both finance, like financially, I think that we can live in this space right. for, for, for the long haul. We're, yeah. we're not, we're not fancy people. It's not, we don't. And I, I think I think it's a, it'll be a very good living for for sure for, absolutely for two for two families. The the hard part is opening. You can't open another gym. Right. You, you can make this bigger, better. You could there, there could be things we can do. We can maybe you know take out some of these walls. There, there's a, ch a chance that the uh, people that work for Zudema are not going to be here. We'll have a little more space. Right. Um. You know that we can't open a new place because. We have to then we have to find that whole staff again. It doesn't work. Like I'm not gonna be able to be there and here. Dave's not gonna be able to be at both places at once. You have to kind of ride with this. And I right. think that we know what like the upside is of of this of this space. And I think that we're cool with it. And and if you have at some point in the future, like if if you have to get another, I don't know, get another job or make make this like a secondary income and do something like that, that's an option. I still don't think so. Like I, I have, right. but you know, I budgeted everything from day one for the first five years, and I really do think that there is enough that we can have enough people in here to make this just always be the way it is. Yeah, like, and and like forever. one of the biggest responsibilities that we feel now, and it's a privilege as much as it's a responsibility, is like we, the business is supplying for other people too. Like we have two full time coaches and Liz and Mike. Yeah, you know, like Mike's got two kids and. and like Liz has a mortgage to pay. Like we want to continue to build them up. This isn't yeah. just about, oh man, I hope I make more money. Like it's never, oh honestly, no, it's a, it's <laughs> it's a responsibility. Never been like like we're, yeah. we're responsible for a lot of, uh, a lot of families now too. Right. And so you have to think about that before you start making this master plan to go move down the street again to find a 15,000 square foot space. I think the question is, where do we see ourselves in, in 10 to 15 years or five, you know, maybe five to 10? bison wise i think that always comes first because that is that's the foundation of of where i am like in my career and chris you need to ha does bison have the ability to get better potential to get bigger it does it because like, i i'm walking around this area there's so many people that still don't know about us they just don't and there's some people that know about us but don't know about us i just had two people go through beginners and i had a third one come in to see the gym friday night and my selling point is no longer the, the workout program, it's the people. Like I pointed out to that, there's a woman that is very insecure about coming in. She wants to give it a shot, but she's worried that she's gonna be judged. And I cut her off and I said like, you're never gonna find a better group of people to work out with, I promise. Right. Like I looked at her straight in the eye and I said, you'll never find it. And I said like, you'll get more support here than you've ever gotten ever in a workout place. And she like, now she's coming Wednesday night, 7.15. And like these little things, like that's what people want. So. Yes, there's these hardcore workout people that want to try cross it, but there's also people that want human connection. And I feel like we haven't touched in on that that often, that hard. So yeah, there's there's a huge market for for growth, but then you have to ask yourself, just like we did at the old space, let's make sure the quality of the product is still high. Yeah. So we can't, like I could probably get 40 people in a class next week, go send some like free class, like free week, come in and try the gym for free while all of my members are paying full freight. You can come in for free. Like 
F that. If you want to come in, you try the gym out. That's awesome. But I don't want 40 people in these classes because it's going to lessen the yeah. quality. So it's like what we've always done. Try to make the quality of the product better. And some of it is programming based. Some of it is the equipment that we have or don't have. Some of it is how we lay out our gym. Like we, we could fit more people in the gym, but you have to be careful with not co not necessarily COVID, but just safety, equipment, yeah. logistics, coach, quality of coaching. You coach big classes in the morning, Sam. It's not it's, easy. There yeah. are some Hoboken gyms that have half the space as us and they, they have the same cap yeah. that we do. On the, you know, right. we, we could pack them in. Yeah. But we don't, but we don't want to, we want to do this thing responsibly. And I, I think that's where we're always going to trend towards. Yes. We have a lot of, I feel we have an influx of people in their twenties and young thirties that are joining the gym now that maybe that's, that's the next group of people that come in. What we hate to see though, it's tough as a tough pill to swallow is there, there is some turnover with people that have been here for a long time for a variety of reasons. Like I do, I truly miss some of the people that we had five, six years ago. And some of it's kid-based, logistic-based, injury-based, just got burnt out, don't like it anymore, to be honest with you, like, and that's fine. And it's tough to not have that same people, but it's our job to kind of keep the culture going, keep the ship going. And if you're in, you're in. If you're out, you're out. You I, think, I think yeah. the things that really defined bison compared to some of the other places and the things that i've heard uh, especially on other podcasts are, are one you truly believe in the pro the programming fits everyone so i remember a while ago you guys were kicking around do we do specialized classes do we do a boot camp for people who just good, want cardio good point and i see a lot of crossfit places who offer a burn and move class <laughs> or this class or that class and i remember telling you at the time if you truly believe in that product then do it. If you don't believe in it, don't do it. And you have always stuck to what you truly believe in. Yeah. If you truly believe CrossFit is for everyone, yep. that you can use it and get better at it, yep. then why do you need a boot camp class? Why do you need this? Yeah. Right. And, and I remember you saying that. And that really influenced me a lot. I remember Deb T said the same exact thing. We were like, I think she overheard Chris and I talking about a boot camp idea. Yeah. And well, maybe we'll try to 845 and we'll move the 930 to 945. Yeah. And Deb's, you guys are a CrossFit gym. Yeah. That's all she said. That is our bread and butter. Right. And like, yeah. it, it's from cr CrossFit memberships, CrossFit classes. And and no, we and, me, me and Dave saw, like in CrossFit Hoboken, when we first started, it was the WOD, the workout of the day. And everybody did the workout of the day, like the, the, the advanced people, the new people. And that was what we loved about it. We would see these like beasts in there and we wanted to, you want to get good. Then when there's like specialty classes starting, like everyone that was kind of like on the better side or the, the good people, they would go in the back room and they would do their own workout. And then the workouts, the, the workout of the day was like all new, newer people. They didn't get the same experience that we did because we, we were working out with the coaches and, and the owners and all the other like competitors. There was a couple of people who went to the regionals there. We were working out in classes with them. We wanted Bison to be like that. Yeah, we didn't. We don't. Want, we didn't want to have open gym every day, where it was like someone could decide to do open gym instead of the workout. Mm. We want them to do the workouts, and and we program hard enough for advanced athletes, and you can scale it good enough for for newer people. Great yeah. point. That's a great point. Yeah. So everybody's doing that same workout, and we we keep that old school whiteboard because if you do beyond the whiteboard or anything where you enter your scores. Only the people who think they did good that day are going to put their score. I in. hate that. Yeah. Right. So, so you're going to have five people a day putting stuff in. And we like that we have it on the Zen player now. Nobody even uses it. The whiteboard, you can't hide from that. As much as like, that can be detrimental, also, it's very, it, it, it's it, raw. It's raw. And it's just like, this is, this is my bet. Like, this is what yeah. I did today. It's real. Like, this is what I did. And, and, you know, I wish it was better, but like, everyone can see it. I, like, it just. I, it's I, a better atmosphere. I, I agree with you a thousand percent. Dave, you've always said, we've talked about competitors classes yep. or separate yep. class, and you guys have made it very egalitarian for everyone. Yep. That also makes it hard when you also talk about why some people haven't come back. And that's always fascinated me because I always wondered why do some people stay with it for eight, nine years? Why do some people leave after a while, even though they're perfectly fine people yeah right. and and i really believe after sort of uh, talking to people and thinking about it is that crossfit isn't for everybody i mean everyone should try it like you said but it is not necessarily for everyone and if you had a level of performance that you felt like you achieved before at bison or somewhere else and then you come here and you're like oh but i'm now not going to be that good person or you're like chris everyone's scores on the whiteboard. And maybe you used to be hanging with some of the better athletes here at Bison, and now you're gonna come back and you're gonna put up these awful scores, and who knows if you're gonna get back to where you thought you should be. It's an ego thing. 
And it's a self-esteem thing. And the problem is, is that for all of us, we have to get past that. If you really believe this is about your fitness and this is about health. performance and yeah. health, screw your ego. This is going to make you better. Maybe you can't do everything. Maybe you can't perform the way you did, but you still know that you have to show up and do something. Yeah. And yeah. if you want to go to a Globo gym and do that, that's that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. And we just know, we, we just saw someone on Instagram who couldn't hack it here. <laughs> Honestly, I believe it. He couldn't hack it here. Personality wise. Because of his ego. Yeah. because of what he thought he was, what he could do. Yep. And he felt better for himself for going to a Globo gym. And God bless, listen, at least he's working out and doing something. Yep. Right. But if you really want to be better in the long term, you're not going to be able to say, sustain that forever. I, I, I don't believe. I think right. you're going to need a community. You're going to need people who are like-minded. You're going to need challenges you can't think of stuff. You can't do that by yourself. You're yep. gonna, you're gonna need. The only way you're gonna be fitnessing well, unless you are an amazing person for twenty years, right, is, is a situation like this. I right. agree. I agree completely. Yeah. So let let's cap this off with let's all give an answer on this. What can a gym or a future gym owner learn from Bison? Both, but failure or success. But just try to give me one thought. There's probably ten you can give. And so that what, what can someone learn from whether it's success, failure, whatever experience overall, and then what are you most proud of? I'll go, cause I'm not even yeah. part of the, <laughs> no, no, part. you are, you are, but, but I will say this. And what are you most proud of? Watching you two over the past, what is it? Eight, eight years now? Yeah. 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 You're, you're number nine. Yeah. Is one complimentary people can be super successful. You guys are not the same people. You're very different people and you made it work. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be a storybook. It's like a marriage. <laughs> <laughs> like a marathon. <laughs> My marriage is part, what are yeah. you talking about? <laughs> and the other thing is, is that you, the second thing is you, you guys truly care about people. Yeah. And if you care about people, it, it good things happen. And three, neither of you guys have egos where you guys had to be the biggest dog in the room or the most successful person in the room. I've seen both of you guys work in, this, in the service of others. Yep. And I've seen other CrossFit gym owners and other places and other businesses where they had to be the person. Mm -hmm. And I've never ever seen that with you two. And I think I attribute a lot of your success for that. Cool. Thanks, Sam. Chris, what do you got? Um, I think like w whether you're going to open a gym or whatever, whatever you are going to do, especially if it's like a second career or whatever, you have to make sure you're in it for the right reason. For me, the right reason was I want to help people and I also really trust the product and I love and I love it. All right. I don't wear CrossFit shirts around. I don't follow. I don't you CrossFit. It, it, I truly love CrossFit. You may not know that, though. I have like, some other interests, too. But I really believe in that product and I really want to help others. And that's what it's about. If your goal is just making money, then do something else. Do something less personal, <laughs> right? This is personal, yeah. right? You are a lot of roles here. If you don't like people, this is not for you. You are going to be a shrink. You're going to be a leader, a follower. Every, every si single thing you can think of, a business owner, finances, like all kinds of stuff. It's a whole mix of everything. So be prepared for that. That that is my best yeah. advice for you. And yeah. if you can find a partner, I mean, I that that works great. I remember my first day of business school, the teacher said partnerships do not work. Yeah, I told David, I said let's not be one of those st statistics. Yeah, I did uh, research on that last year for a speaking thing I did with uh, George's company, and I was blown away by the numbers. That I think it was eighty percent of small businesses don't make it five years, and fifty percent don't make it a year. So it's it's pretty cool. Partnership, yeah. Partnerships. Yeah. And what are you most proud of? Don't be <laughs> humble. Don't be humble. Just say it. Well, if your working career is 40 years, maybe you work from your 25 to 65. to 65, right? 10 years, I've been we've I've been my own boss for 10 for a quarter of my working life. A lot of people want to do that. They just don't know how to get there. You got to kind of take a leap, but I'm pretty proud of that. And I, the way it's looking, it, it, I'm, that might be 50% soon. So I think I'm proud of that. Cool. Yeah, I like that. that. That's cool. Yeah. My, my advice for an owner would just be to understand like the spectrum of the, the positive and negatives that occur from a gym that exists for a year as opposed to eight. Like I always try to remind myself that 
you do want your gym to grow. Like we needed it to, we would not have existed if we didn't grow from 30 members. But when you have 30 members and 10% of them cause stress for you, that's only three people. All right. If you get up to 300 members, 10% is now 30 people that cause you stress. And if you're not careful, if you're not like in tune with that, it can really th send you down a dark alley and it's hard to get out of that. Um, on the positive side, if you have three members in your gym or three people in the gym that are great influences, they help build your brand, they help build the brand. I shouldn't say not your brand, that's three people, but if it's a gym this big or 300 people, like that's 30 people right there that are in your corner that are really fighting for the brand of the business. I think your job on that is to stay the same on all situations, whether it's big or small. And I think that's one thing that we've done pretty well. There's not much that has changed about us. Every now and then I get a comment that I've changed a little bit, but I think that's just like my coaching style has changed or, but are things that logistically have to change. But I think your job as, as someone that is in charge of the gym, in charge of his staff is to just be as straight as possible. Like there's one thing I ever want to hear anyone ever say about me is that just, you're just reliable, that you're just always there, whether you're in a good place or a bad place because I've been in good places and bad places so you guys have too and I think that's like the one thing that's really hard to do but that would be my biggest advice is to always put focus on that and the one thing I'm proud of the most is the amount of people that have been helped not just from us like the the fitness side of it but the amount of businesses in this gym that have been helped by Bison right we have a lot of business owners that come to our gym that now have business from this place we have a lot of people that have friends from this place. We know people that met each other here that are in each other's weddings. And that's what I'm most proud of is that Bison has created a huge part of, of, of so many different people's yeah. lives that have impacted. And impact to me is not the direct person that you're trying to help. It's impact as you help someone and then they go help others. And I think our staff, we've done that. We've helped that person on the staff become more confident, a better coach. And all of a sudden now they're taking off, right? Like they don't even need us for anything anymore. And that's what I'm most proud of that the amount of change that this has occurred in people's lives, their businesses, in that case, their income, but also just like their overall self-worth. Like that's what I'm most proud of. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. Cool. Yeah. All right, so I think that'll wrap it up, guys. Thank you, and uh, hopefully you guys have a stronger understanding of where Bison's come from, where we're headed, why we do what we do, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you, everybody, for taking the time out of your day to listen to the Herd Fit Podcast. Be on the lookout for next week's episode.